to many thousands of viewers in France, Holland and Germany, as well as members of Her Majesty's forces serving in those countries. From now until after five o'clock this afternoon, television cameras take you into the heart of London to watch and share in each phase of this great day's events. We take you first to Buckingham Palace. There we shall see the departure of the Queen's procession to the Abbey. A procession which we shall see again as it passes along the banks of the Thames on its way to Westminster. Later, we shall take you into the Abbey for the coronation service itself. The service ends shortly before two o'clock. But as Her Majesty will not immediately leave the Abbey, there will be a pause until about 2.25. Later, the Queen, now invested with the symbols of Majesty, sets out on her triumphant procession through the streets of her capital. At about half past four, Her Majesty reaches Buckingham Palace at the end of her five-mile drive. There will then be a second pause until five o'clock, when we shall again join the crowds outside the palace for Her Majesty's appearance on the balcony and for the Royal Air Force salute. That, briefly, is the television plan for the first part of Coronation Day. It's surely the greatest moment in television history as we take you now into the heart of London to witness these memorable events. We have just been joined by our overseas viewers, and the moment has come to take you to Barclay Smith at the Victoria Memorial in front of the Queen's London home, Buckingham Palace. Good morning, but not quite the morning we'd hoped for. There's a threat of rain from a dull, overcast sky. And against that sky, the royal standard flutters from the top of Buckingham Palace. And below, the east front of the palace on which all eyes are turned. For it's through that central arch that Her Majesty will first appear in about 10 minutes' time, riding in the gold coach of state. The coach will swing across the forecourt to leave by the southern gate. The southern gate there on the left. It'll then turn to pass back across the front of the Triple Guard of Honor. The Royal Navy there, the first battalion of the Irish Guards, and to the right, the guard of the Royal Air Force. And from high up on the roof of the palace, the picture that we shall show as the coach leaves the forecourse. Looking down on the RAF guard, we can see beyond the beginning of the crowd. Now there's not all that much standing room in this wide open space that surrounds the Victoria Memorial, but every inch of pavement and the grass verge of the park beyond is jam-packed, not only with the people of London, but with the people who've come from all over the world to see their queen ride to her coronation. And in those stands sit friends and personal servants of Her Majesty. And down there in the roadway, the only mounted band in the whole of today's procession. They're the greys of the trumpeters in their gorgeous mounted state dress, their velvet jockey caps, their gold laced frock coats, and they're the blacks on which the whole of the rest of the household cavalry are mounted. And at their head there, you could just see his head, that great warrior Pompey, the drum horse. A 
and beyond the blues, the immaculate line of scarlet and black, the brigade of guards who line the route from here up to the Admiralty. And they're right in the neck of the mall. They're right in the neck of the mall. At the head of his 12 watermen is the Queen's barge master, Mr. Barry. Forward of them, the Queen's bodyguard of the Yeoman of the Guard, once the Sovereign's personal servants, and dressed still very much as they were 500 years ago. And forward again, the differing colorful uniforms of the Queen's escort of officers from the colonies and the Commonwealth. And between those escorts and the band of the Grenadier Guards, there almost at the top, ride the high officers of the three services, ride on horseback and ride in carriages. And I think you can just see the last gun of the King's troop of the Royal Horse Artillery. And away in the distance, up towards Admiralty Arch, what looks like two blocks of toy soldiers, but is in fact 1,000 of Her Majesty's foot guards. And it's through these splendid arches towards Admiralty Arch the procession will move, past Nelson High on his, column, on his monument there, to turn right-handed down Northumberland Avenue to the Thames Embankment. And it's from there that the Queen will get this distant view of St. Paul's. Cumberland Avenue meets the embankment near Hungerford Bridge. Then along the full length of the embankment the procession will go. Past the gabled outline of Whitehall Court. Past that new government building. And so to the white stonework of the RAF Memorial where we have our next group of cameras. On past Westminster Pier, past Scotland Yard, where the route turns right beneath Big Ben. And then from Big Ben through Parliament Square to Westminster Abbey. back here outside the palace. It can only be a few moments now before Her Majesty appears. And as the Queen drives through the archway, she will see there high above the crowd on that island in the center, the memorial to her great, great grandmother, Queen Victoria. And we'll see beyond those lovely, those superb arches, four of them, which span the road to Admiralty Arch. And across the road from the memorial, to the left of the Triple Guard of Honor, there the center of the, there is the center of the Triple Guard of Honor, the Irish Guards. To their left, in the senior position, the men from the Nor Command of the Navy. To their left are the men who hold the supreme award for gallantry the Queen Victoria founded. And with them, men and women from civil life, holders of the George Cross, which the President Queen's father instituted during the last war.
And at any moment now, that empty archway there will frame that most noble and sterling of sights, the sovereign's escort of the household cavalry. Two divisions of the lifeguards preceding the team of greys that draws the great coach of state. And here comes the Sovereign's escort of the Household Cavalry. And behind, riding in the gold coach of state, her husband at her side, comes Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. By the grace of God, Queen of this realm and of her other realms and territories, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith. Majesty wearing the crimson parliament robes and upon her head a jeweled diadem. said just now that Her Majesty was wearing the Crimson Parliament robes. This is what was expected. She is, in fact, wearing a dress of shimmering white.
And so the Queen has started on her way down the Mall, past Trafalgar Square, to move along the Thames Embankment to Westminster. But we now go on ahead of the procession to Westminster Abbey and Michael Henderson. Westminster, the hub of today's great proceedings. The twin towers of the Abbey standing as they do on a site which has seen very nearly all our kings and queens crowned for almost 900 years. These towers, with the feeling of timeless calm, look down on the excited crowds below, many of them probably seeing their first coronation. And between the packed stands here, down this route which Her Majesty the Queen will shortly be coming. We've just arrived in time to see the beginning of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother's procession. Arriving at the door of the annex to the Abbey. First of all, the captain's escort of the household cavalry. And now the Irish state coach bearing Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, with Princess Margaret. Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother was met at the royal doorway by the Earl Marshal, the Duke of Norfolk. And as with all the royal arrivals here today, as with the Queen when she arrives shortly, there is the national anthem by the band on duty here, the Royal Marines from Portsmouth, followed by a fanfare by the trumpeters of the Royal Military School of Music at Nella Hall. And that royal entrance is the doorway through which Her Majesty the Queen will pass. Above it, the royal coat of arms. Twelve feet high, gold picked out in the heraldic colours of azure and jewels. And above that, a royal blue concave canopy and 